Welcome to this rapid revision session on the succession crisis of 1066. Who should be king of England? January 1066. Edward the Confessor is Deadwood the Confessor. Problem? You'd better believe it. He had no clear heir to the throne. Let's consider why. The line of succession. Succession in this case usually means what comes next. And in this example, who's going to be the next king? Today it's fairly simple. When the monarch dies, it's the next living relative, male or female, who takes over. So, for example, when Queen Elizabeth II dies, the current plan is that Charles, Prince Charles, her eldest son, would take over as the king. In the 11th century, Saxon England had it a little bit more complicated, because there were few set rules. All of these things could be acceptable reasons to be an heir to the throne. Being a blood relative, although not necessarily meaning the closest or eldest relative being chosen as the heir by a previous king, being accepted as a king by the English nobles. As long as they agree, you'll have their support. If you have their support, you've got the strength to rule. So the nobles would be the rich and important people in England. What you could do now is you could summarise how kings were chosen in Anglo-Saxon England and then consider why this might lead to difficulties and arguments. You could explain one example. If not, let's look at who was trying to claim the throne in 1066. One thing that you could do with this is you could create a table like this. The names of our four claimants are as follows. Harold Godwinson, Edgar Atheling, or Etheling, I usually say Atheling, Harold Hardrada, and William of Normandy. The different things that you might want to record include relevant detail about them, their claim, why do they want to be king or why do they think they should be king, how strong you consider their claim to be, and how good their chance of success seems to be as well. If you're going to use this table, you could always take a screenshot and print a copy now, or you could jot it down. That's up to you. If you're going to do that, you can pause the video here. If not, let's crack on and see who's who in these different claims to the throne. Claim number one, Harold Godwinson. There's an artist's impression. Godwinson was Earl of Wessex and Sussex in Edward's reign. He was an experienced and talented military commander, popular with the English people and the nobility. He was chosen by the Witten in January 1066 as the most popular noble. He claims that he was promised the throne by Edward, although there is some dispute over this. He's aged in his 40s. He's not too young, nor is he too old. Just right, as Goldilocks would say. He's also likely to have support and, uh, sworn an oath to support William of Normandy's claim, but that's very likely under duress. If you've not seen my rapid revision session on Harold's Norman embassy, you might want to look back at that if you know, don't know what I'm on about. He's also a member of the powerful House of Godwin, with brothers and, and, rel who are, and relatives who are already useful allies. Most of all, though, he is the man who is actually proclaimed king on January the, the 6th, 1066. That doesn't mean that that claim and that proclamation isn't going to be contested, though. Let's see who else who wanted to be king. The other English claimant was Edgar the Etheling, or Edgar Atheling. There's a contemporary picture of him. He's another English claimant. He had inherited a claim from his father. He's actually a relative of Edward the Confessor. He's his nephew. But he is only very young. He's about 14 years old in 1066. That means that he's too young and inexperienced to lead armies in war. Does this mean that he's a suitable king in 1066 when there's a likelihood of invasions? Perhaps for this reason, the Witten chose Harold Godwinson over Edgar. He has little experience of ruling, although he has been born to a noble family. After all, Etheling or Atheling means prince or highborn. But who are the foreign claimants? Harald Hardrada. He's got quite a flimsy claim in some respects, but it is backed by a powerful army. He's already the king of the Norwegians and a ferocious Viking warrior. After all, Hardrada actually means harsh counsel or hard ruler. He commands a very powerful army of Viking warriors and is allied with Tostig Godwinson, who claimed the English would welcome him as king. Well, he would say that. He was exiled, wasn't he? If you're not sure about what I'm on about there, you might want to look at my rapid revision session on the rising against Earl Tostig in 1065. Anyway, Harold Hardrada, with Tostig, invents to invade England to expand his power, wealth and lands. England has been ruled by a Dane before, King Canute, who is considered to be a strong and effective ruler. However, he's got quite a weak claim. This was inherited from a promise made to his father by Canute, but which his father was never able to pursue. That brings our final one, and a very famous one too. William of Normandy. 
also known as William the Bastard. Here he is. William was Duke of Normandy. Though not a king, he was an experienced and ruthless leader. Similar in age to Harold, not too old and not too young. He's also experienced in battle. He led a relatively modern army of mixed troops with innovative tactics, a mixture of archers, cavalry and heavily armoured armed infantry. He claimed that Edward had promised him the throne some years earlier. He had close dealings with Harold Godwinson during Harold's Norman embassy and he claims that Harold has sworn an oath to support him. He also claims that he's backed up by the Pope. That's significant. If it's seen that God is on William's side, it increases the amount of support that he'd have. He has gathered an invasion force, including several allies, such as the Bretons and the Flemish. He's poised to launch an invasion of the south coast and take Harold on head to head. Some final points then. The death of Edward the Confessor left no obvious heir to the throne. This led to a succession crisis where there were four main claimants. Harold Godwinson was proclaimed king by the Witten, but had no family connection to Edward, unless you count the marriage of his sister to him, and had promised to support William of Normandy, although probably under duress. Edgar Atheling was related to Edward, but was too young to be supported as a military ruler. Harald Hardrada was allied to Tostig Godwinson and had a powerful army, but little legitimate claim to the crown. And lastly, William of Normandy had some claim. He had been promised support by Harold, but would have to mount a risky cross-channel invasion. Who do you think is most likely? In fact, you probably know who already wins, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they had the strongest claim. Anyway, that concludes this rapid revision session. I hope it's been useful to you, and if it has, please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. If you've got a topic that you're desperate for me to do next, put it down in the comments and I'll see if I can do it. Other than that, goodbye.